where we can actually have a discussion. What I want to ask Phil, just Phil, is why... Wh Ooh! He just jackknifed, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> and crushed those off, those rear fairies in the back of the Jesus Christ. What? Okay, explain to what? the rookie. We're gonna get to the why Walmart doesn't want. Oh, that's a lady. It's bad. Oh, man, that is not good. Wow. I just have my weird standing here. Jeez. I think it's her trainer over there. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Jeez, that is. Watch who you hire. Woo! <laughs> Make sure you got a good trainer. Yeah. Oh my god. That's gosh. a whole nother video. We were. Yeah. Even... <laughs> wow. Yeah, parking is, is a thing. But I'm going to ask you a question. As yes. a driver who's been driving over five years, who's been handling this business, now owns the vehicle, why don't businesses want us to park at their establishment like Walmart and Target? <laughs> why don't they want us to park there? The, the simple answer is truckers are dirty. That's just disgusting. And I'm sure some of you guys that have ever been to a, a pilot, because honestly, they're the, the worst, worst defender in this case, that the parking lots are disgusting. You see things from used napkins, pee bottles, in some cases, feces in a bag. And then it makes it worse when the feces gets ran over and then you gotta look at that and smell that. I, I recall a few weeks ago, I was in Atlanta, I was walking into the store from my parking spot and there was a plate of crab legs, eating crab legs on the ground. Ooh, well, that's that. Yes, that was, it was disgusting. And that's why you think they don't want us parking there? Clearly. See, I had a theory as well too, and you let me know if you think this is right or not. Yeah. We tear up the actual asphalt. That is true. And they got a, that's private. They yeah. Go and go and that that is true. Calls, because when it comes to parking lot establishments that are meant for trucks to be handled it's a thicker grade of asphalt that is that it, they i don't know the the logistics behind it but i know it that for a fact it's a certain mix it's a certain amount it's a certain height that they build it to to be able to handle the weight of multiple eighty thousand pound vehicles rolling across them 24 7. Mm. and a lot of times with especially with some of these mom and pop spots they go for the the standard you know lay of asphalt that's used for cars and small vehicles not for you know, large class A trucks. Yeah, because uh, the way asphalt works is it's laid down by heat and spreading up the actual material because in its unpaved form, it's actually a bunch of little rocks that they heat up and then they mash out together with the tractors. So again, that amount of weight constantly rolling across this material that's already been flattened out, it can only resist it for so long before you start getting cracks giant potholes i know you guys have pulled into a fuel stop and be like why are these craters in the middle of this parking lot on the fuel lot that's why the material is not built to handle it it can only do it for so long before it starts to break apart i still like parking at walmart though man but some <laughs> See, walmarts allow you that is true which that's usually going to be in a southern state or a more rural area where they've built the parking lot to the capacity where trucks can get in and out of there but a lot of these places just by design alone, not even necessarily that they don't like you being there, but by design alone, the parking lots are not set up to handle trucks. They're there for the uh, the patrons and customers that are there to shop at the stores, not, you know, not the guys that's just staying there overnight. Right. If anything, because I also was a guy that actually used to deliver to Walmart, a lot of these smaller places or these parking lots that are just not designed for it, there's only one way in and out. Mm. Like it is literally, if you do not go in that specific way to make it to the dock and stuff, you're stuck or you're going to take something out. We're going to tear up somebody's knife, equipment. Like, yeah. Or you're going to jackknife as we just saw a few minutes ago. Prostitution. Man. Prostitution. In the trucking industry. Woo. Do you think that gives us a lot of the bad reputation? Definitely. I mean, aside from, of course, every major city has their pocket where these types of activities take place. But on a more broader national scale, we're the, we're the back end of this industry. I mean, of course. Oh, the oh, of course, of course. They ain't buying that much booty, man. I mean, they developed a name for it, after all. Lot lizards. They call them lot lizards. Have you ever seen a lot lizard? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, typically you won't see it at the, 
I guess you could say the chain fuel stops, your loves, your pilots, your TAs. Well, I, I take that back. You will see them at some pilots and TAs. But for the most part, they're usually in your one-off spots, your, you know, Valero, they got truck parking or your- Owner-out spot. Yeah, so yeah. The owner-outs are buying the booty meat. Oh, definitely, definitely. But, but don't get that misconstrued. I have seen some UPS guys make some purchases too. Yes. Oh, man. Out in Oklahoma, actually. Just passing through, I was taking my 30. Went to this little off in the cut spot. They were using this this store as a drop lot for their um, for their swaps. You know, like the the relay guys that pull doubles. They'll have a spot where they'll meet, and this guy go this way with this trailer. This guy goes the other way. Right. Yeah, on this particular given night, <laughs> I guess this guy had extra time waiting for his his swap partner to come and get his trailer. So this 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 uh, uh, night walker, I'll say, comes strolling up to this day cab. And she proceeds to get into the passenger side, right? Now, mind you, this company is a company that doesn't do passengers. They have a strict policy about that, like many of, of the major companies, especially if you're a local guy, to where you're not supposed to have passengers with you unless they're your teammate. Right. But no, this, this individual got in the truck <laughs> and didn't leave for, uh, for quite some time. In fact, I left before she got out the truck. Wow. And in another instance, a couple got into a truck and they drove off into the night. A couple? Yes, and I know that this, this guy didn't know this couple because they even approached me asking me for a ride or if, if I could accommodate them for the evening. Accommodate them? What does that mean? <laughs> oh, we all know what that means. <laughs> and you just wasn't feeling it. No, no, I'm, I don't play those games. I'm what out is, here to, to make money. That's it. What is your stance on prostitution and human trafficking in uh, the trucking industry? Man, it's it's a terrible thing. It's it's destroyed so many people's lives, and I feel like even in the worst of cases where people are down on hard times, there's so many other avenues you can go about to uh, provide for yourself aside from from selling out your body. Mm. You know, that's that's how I feel about it. I don't I don't endorse it by any means at all. Yeah, and a lot of guys, listen, if you're a trucker, some of these girls that are being trafficked are underage. Yes, that just. You can hit. You can get hit with a pretty hefty sentence, especially especially in states where you're where you're nearing um, a bordering country, like uh, you know the states that border Mexico right. and things like that. Human trafficking is a serious problem. Not only just uh, the the prostitution of women, but men as well. People don't talk about that, but it's a thing. Wow. There's, there's been plenty of, of cases where there were. Uh, you know, sex ring busts where a woman was the leader and they were they were prostituting out men, you know, to other women or men or whoever oh, they were suffering yeah. to that side. You know, no less than men. Oh yeah, it's That's it's the thing. It's the thing. And we don't want any of our trucking money going towards that, man. Number one, you got listen, you got a lot of kids, man. And you don't know what you're getting out here. The best point, if you have to do all that, get off of OTR if you can't wait to get home to your old lady. Um, it's it's and, and that plays into why. Walmarts and, and different places don't want us parking there because they think that I don't say that they think that they know that us parking there attracts people begging for money, they attract prostitution, it attracts these things. So what people end up doing is if it's a nice place, they don't want you to park there. And that's why they're telling you you have to move. If you ever wonder why I can't why can't I park here? It's not just the size of the truck, it's the reputation that we've uh, acquired um, over the years for acquiring and, and being pure as booty meat. <laughs> and, and now you're in a uh, you're in a bad situation. Just Phil, I thank you for coming through. We're gonna ask some questions about fuel lane etiquette, <laughs> and this is gonna get very crazy. Oh.